And whenever you're ready, feel free to make your presentation. Yeah, uh, Your Worship and Council. My name is Greg McKee. I have run a bike shop in Saskatoon called The Bike Doctor for 30 years now. And we used to bike safety, uh, safely out of town on Clarence Avenue. And later there was a lot of talk about a lot of pressure to develop access for the Stonebridge Walmart on their timetable. And an overpass was built which created a perfect barrier to cycling. So that whole part of Stonebridge is now impossible to get to or through safely on a bike or e-bike by anybody. But just on the other side of Circle Drive, it is very livable and you'll see lots of people cycling. Stonebridge is a stranded area for active transportation. So it's nobody's fault here, but it's an uphill battle to make a growing city safe for active transportation. The same intersection becomes more dangerous with more traffic and streets like 8th and College become dangerous barriers. So we need to continually make decisions in favor of mobility or hotspots multiply. The American Association called People for Bikes has a scoring system for the cycling networks of thousands of different cities. And Saskatoon scores 33 out of 100, down from 37 in 2020. Edmonton is 58. Phil Tank recently wrote in the Star Phoenix that we're probably lucky that we haven't had more cycling deaths. The 168 members of Bike Doctor Detours, the cycling club of which I'm president, would agree with that. He also wrote that there's often tension around safe cycling in cities, and I agree. Some tension is unavoidable, but I think it's been a, a theme today that there, is an, there seems to be an effort to get past that because we want to find some common solutions. And I hope we've arrived at a point where we can all agree that disdain is a feeling. It's not an argument. And I know many, it seems like many from the other side, from people who have opposed um, the measures today feel like they're treated, uh, they are treated disdainfully, but I know that cyclists often feel like they are treated disdainfully. The word bike, do, uh, bike lane has become a, a compound uh, swear word in this city in some ways. And it seems to me that it's easier to vote for something that is a sidewalk, but as soon as you attach the word bike to it, it suddenly becomes kind of difficult and political. So this year, I went to Bentonville, Arkansas. It's the hometown of Walmart, and why would anybody go there? Because Walmart took an ugly city and remade it into an ideal city to attract tourists and the best people to their head office. And their main investment went into, of all things, cycling corridors and trails. They built a vibrant mecca on the edge of the Ozarks. The Waltons helped to make our city less mobile, in my opinion, but at least we can learn from them now. So bikeways give us a high kilometer per dollar tool to make Saskatoon a better city. And we can't afford to say no to it because there is nothing that is less expensive, less disruptive, less political, more magical coming forward to help prevent cycling, e-biking, and e-scooter injuries and deaths. The city's survey shows that only 31% of people oppose this. And it's safe to say that not a single one of those opponents will actually be harmed by a lower speed limit on non-arterial streets. This type of casual opposition is typically based on feelings, and it's a reminder that when people get very comfortable, they often lose empathy. And I have a sense that our association feels a sharp imperative to build a connected, active transportation system that no longer strands whole areas of the city and which addresses real safety issues. Simultaneously, it's being asked to do more with less. And this proposal meets those demands. Thank you.